think, uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, inviting me. Uh, and I'm very happy to be here with you in Fresno. And I'm happy to see you quite a, a large group of audience. And I am currently United Nations Special Rapporteur on Right to Food. So my talk is about my uh, most recent report that I uh, gave a week, uh, actually four or five days ago to United Nations General Assembly about the food security and the climate change. This is kind of background information that I'm giving you how we're going to put together these two global problems in a, a picture that in 40 minutes I'm going to try to discuss a little bit and then I'm, I'm happy to a conversation with you because the climate change is a very hot topic right now because of the upcoming uh, meeting in Paris. Uh, but the food security uh, uh, maybe is also as important as climate change, maybe even more, but somehow we don't get the same enthusiasm everywhere in the world, but we talk about the hunger uh, around the world, which right now is 795 million people. It's extremely important, and two are very much connected. That's what I'm trying today to uh, try today, and in my report to United Nations, how these two important issues should be dealt together, and why should be dealt together, and what are the issues that we have to really change in our climate change policy in order to make uh, human rights issues much more uh, in the right front, because climate justice is extremely important as much as reducing the greenhouse gas emission. This is kind of like the summary of my talk, what I'm uh, uh, trying to talk about it. I'm going to turn the slides over. <laughs> Sorry, we will have a kind of... Uh, the issue is, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, make it, who are the food, let's start from the food security rather than global climate change. First of all, we have to know the uh, uh, hunger and food security, how important in the world. Uh, first of all, approximately 1 billion people, which according to 2015 report of the FAO, every year they have a report. This year is 795 million. Last year was 805 million people, which is there's a small reduction of this uh, hunger, uh, people, hungry people, which is kind of what we call uh, chronically hungry. And also we have a, a food insecure uh, people, which is altogether 3 billion, uh, 2 billion food insecure, approximately 1, 1 million, uh, one, uh, 795 million. This is a significant amount of people around the world. They are right now uh, are either undernutritious or mal malnutritious or overnutritious. They all different kind of definitions, but I'm not going to go details. These people are also poor, of course. They are uh, less than uh, $2 a day that they live. And these people don't eat every day. And if they eat every day, only once a day. Uh, for instance, in Nigeria, 28% 28 of the population only eating, uh, uh, not eating every day. This is 24% in India, which is, as you know, India is one of the most uh, fastly growing uh, developing country, but still they have 24% of the population. They can't eat every day. And this uh, Latin America, Peru, is 14%. Uh, uh, these people, where do they live? They, first of all, this uh, chronically hungry people, 95% uh, 95 95 of the chronically hungry people live in either developing countries or the least developed countries. Only 5% we are 
talking about uh, developed world, which is uh, United States, Canada, Europe, uh, and uh, Australia. When you see this, you think that this is a kind of problem of the developing countries, basically, significantly. But we're only talking about chronically hungry people. If we talk about uh, malnourished or food insecure, 49 p million people in the United States currently is, uh, is under this category, which means uh, the issue is not completely out of our, uh, out of our uh, uh, understanding, but basically when we talk about the hunger and more uh, uh, significantly vulnerable population, they live in uh, basically sub-Saharan Africa, and uh, subtropic regions and uh, South Asia and the small island states. These are the 95 people. Mol most of them, actually more interesting, which is important in our food security issues, they are smallholder uh, 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 farmers, which means they try to survive and they try to produce food for the others, which is the, uh, sometimes we call them subsist subsistence uh, farmers, uh, which means they can, uh, they can deal with the only rainy season, rain or the nature and the ecosystem without getting extra help. And the smallholder farmers actually in general, not only subsistence farmers, but the generally smallholder farmers, gives our 70% of food in this world. We, we are fed by them. 70% of our food comes from smallholder farmers and they have globally 30, 30 to 40% of the land. The rest is agri agribusiness, which I'm not dealing right now uh, this. <coughs> Now we come to the climate change, how climate change impact our food security globally, not only completely hungry people, because the hungry or uh, insecure people, they will be or they are already under serious threat of climate change, but the globally we are under the uh, threat of the uh, climate change. The one important thing, of course, global warming, which is heat is, uh, becoming higher, which is uh, this uh, map shows you uh, rising temperature between 1960s to 2060. And this red side, which means both uh, parts of the uh, globe, which two uh, area, which basically that's why we are talking about the Arctic region is under serious threat because the melting ices are important. And also Equator region is generally <coughs> are very much under uh, serious threat. And according to scientists, uh, it will be, uh, a four, uh, four degree uh, increase in general uh, in, in 2100, which means in 100 years. But this four degree is going to be different in different parts of the world. Sometimes some, some parts of the world is two degrees or one degrees or uh, some parts of the world six, seven, eight degrees. When we talk about the Middle East right now, uh, in 50 years, uh, it will not be, or 50 or 75 years, it will not be available for human life, especially in around the Saudi Arabia. They have to really move somewhere else. This kind of issues are serious. And uh, they, we are talking about right now in the uh, global picture who are the most uh, problematic uh, uh, countries and the problematic people. Of course, we can look at from the country perspective and also human perspective. If you look at it geographically, we see the small islands, uh, they are in danger and coastal regions are in very uh, big danger and also the near the uh, equator uh, area is in the danger. If you look at right now this uh, <coughs> project that uh, FAO made it, uh, how uh, impact of climate change will have a, a climate change impact on food, water, ecosystem and extreme weather event. Every degree, for instance, if we get one degree uh, higher, 
two degree higher, three degree, four or five degree, all the problems are going bigger and more serious. If you look at right now, is in our current uh, United Nations Framework Convention of Climate Change uh, uh, Diplomacy, we talk about only uh, two degrees. So uh, this is uh, something uh, very serious because it will be more than two degrees. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, if we look at the uh, heat, of course, heat will Im significantly have impact on water issues. Water is very important. I don't have to tell you, you know very well, and how important in relation to our uh, farming and the uh, food production, because 70% of the water in the world globally goes to the food production and agriculture. Only 30% is the rest of the sectors that uh, we are using in industry or housing or other issues. And also we have to keep the water in ecosystem to make the uh, uh, water cycle. So uh, melting water reserves, especially snow peaks, are seriously important. Now we are waiting for this, uh, this winter. Uh, the uh, El La Nina will give us a rain and then the snowpack will come back because as you know uh, California is an import under the serious uh, uh, problem, drought problem. If you look at the three uh, major rivers in the United States, Columbia, Sacramento, and the Colorado, they all have under this uh, serious uh, stress. And if we go to the business as usual, uh, this will be a serious kind of reduction of the uh, snowpacks and water, and also will be serious reduction of the agricultural activity. And this is not also, of course, in the United States. There are other uh, parts of the world they have a serious problem. If you look at right now, the different kind of river systems in the world, um, you see these are the major river systems in South uh, in uh, South Asia and Middle East and Africa, uh, they are under serious threat because of the uh, drought and the uh, precipitation reduction and also the flooding. Flooding also very important because the water rain comes in a very short period and very intensive way rather than uh, gradually. So these parts, uh, especially these parts of the world are seriously uh, impacted uh, and uh, if we look at these uh, countries like India and China and the United States, these three countries are pivotal countries in relation of uh, our uh, food production because the major staple food which is wheat, uh, rice and corn. These three countries are the major producers. Uh, as far as I remember, Rice in China is number one, India is wheat number one, and the corn is the United States in one, number one. The others are two and three. So they sort of alternatively really feeding the world. This is a very, very important thing in relation to global economy and the climate change and also food security. Uh, this, uh, as you see, you, you must know very well this irrigation is a major, major issue uh, because falling water tables make the slowing irrigation. If we look at the 20th century, what we did, uh, the irrigation became much more available. And uh, it expanded from 250 million acres in 1950 to 700 million acres in 2000. This is a big kind of in increase between 2000 to 2010, but only 10% increase, which means this major green uh, revolution or cheaper food is over because we don't have enough irrigation to expand in, in this period. Uh, it's becoming really serious problem. If we look at, look at right now global grain shortfall, which means major wheat 
exporting countries, who are they? As you see in this uh, 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 picture, uh, the uh, domestic consumption is the yellow one, and the darker one is the export. For instance, Russia is one of the biggest export, but now Russia is reducing its exporting. They use more in, uh, internal issues. If you, I don't know if you remember, in 2010, there was a serious heat uh, in Russia, uh, and they stopped uh, exporting wheat to Egypt, which Egypt become the earlier uh, kind of uh, food rights uh, countries, which is 47 countries had a uh, right uh, uh, issue, problem, conflict, and uh, this was part of the Russia's uh, reduction of the export. And Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Argentina, all have the same, they are reducing their export, they use to import. European Union is the highest. Uh, this is the based on productivity, how their productivity is uh, highest. This doesn't mean that European Union is much bigger, but their productivity is higher than the other countries and Canada and the United States. They all are export and import countries. And it is extremely important looking at this export and uh, import issues because uh, the global economy basically based on this. And uh, if you look at another <coughs> map right now uh, about uh, uh, countries that who is exporting, who is importing, you see the red point, which is Middle East. They are 65% of their food they are importing for the, from other countries, which means they are not self-sufficient, which is extremely important because they are also under serious threat of the climate change. If you look at Asia, Asia 58% negative. Only positive is 91% is United States. The United States still is uh, better off than the rest of the world. Uh, Latin America, not much, uh, but Europe, 17% is exporting. And uh, other than this, all the parts of the world is uh, uh, net, uh, not exactly net, but import, food import countries. If you, I don't know if you remember, but it's 2007, there was a big food prices crash food price crisis happened. The food prices suddenly went up. This uh, crisis created a, a conflict in many uh, parts of the world. Then uh, this uh, crisis is over right now, but uh, the uh, policies that was put in place not really uh, effective to resolve the issue. They just push further out and they manage right now to get again the uh, food prices under control, but this doesn't mean that in the future will not be again. Uh, so, if we go again, this is Middle East region again. Uh, maybe I got too uh, preoccupied with the region because the region is completely under serious conflict and migration issue is extremely <coughs> important right now. Uh, uh, I don't know if you are seeing in the newspapers, but people are just walking, walking through to go into Europe. And uh, this, is, this walking is only in Second World War, I have seen. Now we are seeing everywhere, and I see in my country, because I am from Turkey during the summer, uh, 2.5 million refugees from Middle East. Yes, it is a war, but besides the war, there is a very important economic problem, and the based on uh, this important export grain issue, which is the food issue, which is the uh, water issue, which is the climate change issue. They all are connected with each other. And we all know about the sea level rise, because sea level rise are much more uh, articulated rather than the uh, problems of the weeds, because we don't really uh, see our daily life. But the sea level rise also will make a significant kind of climate in the induced migration, because um, more the sea level goes uh, up and more people 
are moving uh, from uh, their places in a more secure areas. And uh, no, uh, of course, the mar marine resources is also very important, which affects our, uh, our food security, because the ocean not only depleting fishing, but oceans is warming right now. Because ocean is warming, many of the fish are not available. Even if they are av available, they are poisonous, and they are polluted more strongly. So uh, basically, we are talking about the coastal regions of the world, which is 60 million people, li uh, 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 60 percent, not 60 million, 60 percent of people live in the coastal area. And the poor countries, the fishing is the only protein they can get which they are now uh, seriously under threat, not because of the climate change. Also, big fishing fleets are coming from uh, developed countries. They are uh, de depleting the fishing areas, especially in the South Asia, uh, Africa. Uh, for instance, uh, many of the African countries are suffering from this because they can't fish anymore. Pl climate change and also the big uh, fishing fleets are really making uh, their life miserable. Besides the climate change, of course, climate change is not the only problem about the food security. And when we solve the f uh, climate change, it's not going to be food security disappeared because we have rising population and we have rising uh, affluence uh, and we have rising consumption. 